So you might be wondering how I got to this position. What is my purpose here? Why is my king so close to white's king on f1? And is there a reason that I am playing like this? If you want to know the answer to all these questions, please watch the full video. And if you want to just to skip to this position, you can click on the timestamp and the link in the description below. Or you can just sit back and relax and enjoy the show. How do you beat a grandmaster? Do you play conventionally or do you play on the edges? Think outside the box, or rather think outside the box that is outside the box. And what is that you ask? Well, that is the power of anime plot armor and anime logic. And today, your host Casually Chess will cover a game against the real Yardbird where I played like my favorite chess player, Lelouch We Britannia. Not Magnus Carlsen, not Gary Kasparov. I drew the inspiration from the show Code Geass, where Lelouch played against his arch rival Schneisel for the battle for the world domination. So the opening of this game was pretty standard. We played theory-like moves until the move 16, where the real Yardbird played Queen G5 check. And if we open the engine, we could see that this is a draw position, 0.0. .0. If I play king f8, uh, white could just play queen h6. I move my king back, and white move his king back, and it will be a draw. And this happens a lot when you're playing a grandmaster. They know the opening theory well, very well, and you prepared your opening theory. But the best you can do is to reach a draw position, a grandmaster draw. But how boring would that be? in a three minute blitz game. And this was when I thought about Lelouch's wise words. So Lelouch in his game against Shinaizo famously said, if the king doesn't march into the battle, doesn't lead the battle, then what good is the king? And thinking about that, I moved my king to d6 instead of retreating it to f8. And the purpose here is that I want to have this long king march all the way to d2 to attempt to checkmate the king on f1. Because in the anime, the king uh, sticking together with the other king means checkmate for some reason. And anime logic probably works in real life, right? That's what I thought. And uh, this is why I played uh, king d6. You see the computer engine said plus 2.8, which is 2.8 points better for the white pieces. But in anime, the main character is always in a losing or near loss position. And they're always find a way to have a big turnaround. And this is what I'm gambling on, just like Lelouch. So king d6, bishop takes, bishop takes. And uh, Grandmaster, the real yardbird here, really wants to uh, take advantage of my exposed king on d6 and played knight f5 check takes queen f6 check and here i had an opportunity to uh, check it out on my original plan play bishop e6 and move my king back to b8 but i had already crossed the rubicon when i played king d6 and i was not going to turn back so i played king d5 proceeding with my plan uh, long march king plan to d2 square so white check i blocked white check again king d4 check king c3 check king d2 and this was the position that uh, i was showing you guys in earlier in the video where my king is now attacking the rook and threatening for king e2 king g1 and king f2 that is what happens in the enemy and maybe it'll happen in the real chess game, I thought. I think not. Mm. You would do well not to underestimate the White King, my friend. You wouldn't. Checkmate. And this is where my Grandmaster opponent thought outside of the box to match my level of thinking outside the box by playing Queen B2 check, King D3, Queen E2 check. He probably watched the anime too and thought to himself, if 
casually chess, want to checkmate my king. I gotta kick the king away, back to his ma main camp, and that is how I'm gonna win this game. So I played king d4, and here the real yard bird cr cracked under this intense pressure because there is actually a checkmate in two in this crucial position. I'll pause the video for you guys to find out how white could do it. Okay guys, so let's turn on the computer engine to find out how white could checkmate. So queen e3 check, king d5, and queen d3 check. It's mate because the rook covers the c-file and the queen covers all the escape routes of the king and it was game over. But in this panic state, uh, my grandmaster opponent was really keen on kicking my king back and played rook d1 check, which allowed me to escape by playing king c5, escape back to my main enemy camp. Uh, my, so he played check, king b6, check again, king c7, check, king takes. And here, although white is up a queen, black's pieces are very active. And as you can see in the ensuing moves, king e2, bishop c4 check, still attacking as the best offense is the best defense. King d2, bishop d5, king, rook d1, rook d8, king c3, king e6. And here, black's pieces are very well protected. Rook protects the rook, and rook protects the bishop. And in anime, when the villain is stuck on defeating the main character, they would usually want to have a finishing blow that wipes out uh, the main character completely. And this is what happened in the game too, when the real yard bird played queen c7, hoping to play rook e1, king f6, and queen e7 threatening checkmate after playing h4 later on. But usually in anime, when the killer move fails, the main character succeeds. And this is how I found the move rook c8, pinning the queen because the king is on c3. And now, after rook e1 check, king f6, my grandmaster opponent resigned because the queen is forced to trade with my rook. And after the trade, my rook and the bishop overpowers the rook and the pawns. And that is a complete winning position for me. So that concludes the game. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the game. Please make sure to like, subscribe, and come back for the future videos. I hope to see you all for the future videos and thank you all for watching.